first and foremost, you know, can you share, you know, the initial, the initial reasoning for creating this film and, and why do you feel this story needed to be told during this climate? Wow, that is a deep question, but um, there's not enough representation of young black females, of young black women in anything in Hollywood. Um, and that was the main thrust of I wanted to tell this story. Um, and that she's a young black woman who doesn't have all the answers. She's trying to find her voice. She's vulnerable. She's not tough all the time. That's the persona. That's the image of a black woman, especially a young black girl. Like you're from the hood, if you're from the streets and you're tough. But um, Rashida, she's a vulnerable girl. She's trying to figure out who she is. And she comes out of her shell and she becomes a confident person. So. And anyone else can chime in as well if you have anything you guys, you guys want to add to that as well. Um, maybe Jean or, or Tiffany. Um, I think she did well. I mean, Nikki's the director. She is the whole, you know, writer director. So I think just her, you know, understanding why she created the character and her process behind it, she can answer. No one can answer that better than her. <laughs> Jean and myself, we're producers. So any, you know, questions you have regarding process, character development, I think that's best for Nikki, but anything regarding just like, you know, the logistics, the how we did it, I'd be more than happy to answer any question along those lines. For sure. Well, why do you both feel that this story should have been told during this plan? Like, what do you think it was about the significance of this short film that kind of translates to the audience or the viewer and having those kind of conversations started because you all tackle a lot of issues where it's like mental health and, you know, just so many powerful issues that are happening. So why do you both feel like, you know, this was really needed, especially with everything that's happening with race wars and things with Breonna Taylor, George Floyd and things of that nature? I'll go. Um, oh, go ahead, John, go. Well, for me, I, I came in on the later half of the whole development process of uh, um, in putting this project together. For me, I pay I pay more attention to music and sound, um, and, and bringing those bringing those sound elements and musician elements to the project. Uh, Nikki, first off, she's an outstanding director and writer and producer. I've worked with her before, and I've also met her at Urban World Film Festival years ago. Um, like the year before I end up on Insecure. So she she has been like a, a partner with me through thick and thin with like the creating process of even my own projects. And then when she came to me and told me about this, I thought it was an amazing idea, especially where you're tackling uh, a coming of age story from a black woman's perspective, a young black woman's perspective. And then you're dealing with the mental health issues that are going in with people on a day-to-day -day basis like and mental health seriously has become what 2020 is all about mm -hmm. uh, considering the fact that not to bring not to put it like a, a dark cloud over this whole situation i'm currently dealing with a situation where a friend of mine has has taken himself mm -hmm. um like two weeks ago and then now another friend of mine is unraveling so mental health is a very, very big thing. And we don't talk about it enough um, within the black community and with, within the young black men. Um, it's almost like people are being penalized if you're, if you're 20, a couple shades darker than white people, or if you're just black or brown, uh, you, are, you are criminalized for your mental health. So um, have, a story like this that sparks conversation um, that speaks on that is very much needed and then also a woman a young woman coming into her own and dealing with so many aspects between the male ego and trying to navigate that on her own um, without a mother in the picture is very very tough and a dad who doesn't really know how to really communicate with his daughter besides just telling her what to do um, is a very very rough thing to do and like it speaks to me on the on a, on the on the notion that my niece she's growing up without a father her father her father passed away when she was 5 so 
with that with me and then seeing what a young girl has to go through in her in her growth as an right. individual and standing up for what she believes in um this brought me to this project and i feel like you know you kind of touch on a really major key here it's a black woman who is or black young teenager who's growing up in this type of society and i feel as though especially in today's norms or people want to normalize when it comes to the black woman it's always stated like oh she's strong she's a strong black woman and you know black women aren't able to have that sensitivity there where it's like Sometimes we're not strong and that's okay. Sometimes I do not feel like I can hold everything up together, you mm -hmm. know? And, and I think that even the, the, the dynamic between her and her father, you mm -hmm. know, as a male, it's kind of like his mindset was, okay, I tell you what I need you to do and I just expect mm -hmm. you to kind of follow suit. And mm -hmm. I feel like that is something that has been, you know, within our generations for a long time. And I feel like, having that scene specifically with their interaction from a viewer's perspective. I don't have any children, but for those who may have children and who may have daughters, I feel like for them, it kind of shows them, okay, like maybe how I'm communicating with her, maybe a little bit improper. Maybe I should find a different way to communicate and understand my daughter because as men, we can't relate to females, you know? We are- we very can't, tell, can't tell a woman what to do. Also. For years, yeah. it's shown that women have been the people to change everything and make things happen. But yeah. then a male <laughs> is the person who kind of like takes the, takes the recognition for it. But mm -hmm. a woman starts all the revolutions that we're dealing with mm -hmm. and she ha makes sure it sees, it sees it through the very end. Mm -hmm. um, me as a Haitian American, Haitian American man, 1804, everybody knows about the, the, they know about uh, Toussaint, Lu Toussaint, but it was a woman who started the revolution. It was the woman who got everybody organized. And then Toussaint is the uh, person that we all know about. Mm -hmm. But it's black women who lead the charge and see things to the very end, you know? So like we- the Civil rights movement too. <laughs> exactly. So mm -hmm. it, it, For it's- a black woman, I think that's the moral here. <laughs> protect black women. Protect and support black protect women. Protect black women, yes. Especially yes. our young ones too, because yes. it's you know, there's they're the young the most vulnerable in our society. Yes, we know Malcolm X quote about black women. Think about the young black women. Mm. You know, like they're they're the ones being targeted and they don't like like John said, they don't have the support systems around them. So when you, when you have someone who can figure out who they are through a creative means, through anything, that's powerful. So. The film was prophetic. I mean, very prophetic. <laughs> are there any elements that maybe a Nikki or something that you see within this character? Like, is there any realism that we kind of can tap into looking at this character and seeing if there's anything that maybe you can relate to you or that you've inputted into this film? Like as it relates personally to me, like yes, I like it relates yeah. personally to you. Like yeah. it really personal things you added in there, kind of so you can kind of get a little glimpse of your story to an extent through the character's eyes. Yeah, uh, I grew up in a very creative home, um, surrounded by musicians. And even though singing was a part of our everyday, I still didn't feel like I had a voice. And it wasn't, me not feeling I had a voice within my family unit. It was me not feeling I had a voice outside of that, like at school or like, you know, at competitions or at here or at there. Like I, I realized there is this, um, a, a, a comparison between my, me having my own voice and knowing who my identity is and knowing what that is. So that's where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your respect their roles for this film because it was so deep and so detailed. With every scene, there was just something that just really stood out. So can you share a pro and a con of your function for the film? Because to create something like that, I'm sure there were some challenges that you were possibly facing in your respect their roles. So, and you guys can definitely, you know, um, share your, your responses one by one. So whoever wants to take the lead first can go ahead. Oh, okay. Whew, I will. You just asked like a loaded question, so. 
I know, oh. so triple E's a little loaded, y'all. Just uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> Well, I came on, you know, as a producer and when I came on, you know, I would say the pro is just the opportunity to work with Nikki. You know, I've known her for some time and I've seen her talent. It was just great to finally be able to collaborate and I love the project and working with AFI, which is like a premier, one of our premier film schools. So having the backing of AFI, working with Nikki, having an amazing crew. And I, you know, the challenge, you know, it was, it was a challenging, very ambitious project. Uh, we did this through the directing workshop for women, which Nikki was a participant. And there was a ton of restrictions. Like you only had four or five days of film, no pickup, no pickup shoots, no reshoots, no overtime. So we were operating or working under just very tight conditions and that brought out the best in me, but it also was like, you know, nerve wracking, stressful, but it made me realize I can do this. I feel like I just kept telling myself, you get through this, you know, you can get through it easy because literally we, some of the challenges were obviously financing, just getting the money. Cause it's not, a, it wasn't an investment. It was based on donations. So to get people to really open up their pocketbook and to really believe in this project. That was one of our biggest challenges. I think almost every challenge that we had stemmed from that, but we got through it. And I think that's one of the pros is just having a strong team, you know, Nikki and the people, you know, having the team just help you get through it and having faith. So I would say pros, just the challenge was a pro. The con was not enough money. But it all worked out, and it, it, I came out stronger as a producer. Yeah, I feel like when you have limited resources and limited time, and you're working under pressure, and I think every creator can attest to this, you know, you, your best work kind of comes from being under that pressure. So Absolutely. Yeah. John or Nikki, do you guys have, um, you know, anything you might want to share with a pro or a con for you, or... Oh, I yeah. Think you're oh. <laughs> you can go. I, I, I feel like I've talked. Um, the pro was creating like this family unit. It's like the, one of the things I love about film and uh, making TV is like the cast and the crew that you're with becomes like your family. And there's nothing like that feeling when you're just there with each other and, you know, you form relationships fast like because you're in a crisis mode so you all have to figure out how to work with each other and so i love the adrenaline of that so that was definitely a pro and along with that you know seeing what i put on the page come to life like that you know that first shot i was like oh my gosh like and you realize that when you do that first sequence and, and it works you're like oh okay like this chemistry <laughs> got something like, here yeah. i can craft it right 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 the the con was like i i like i like to give space and time for my actors so it was time um i just wish i had more time to explore because i like to play i like to give my actors room to play i don't like to force you know we got to get this shot, cross this off the list, keep going, go, 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 go. You know, like, I, I don't like that. Um, but yeah, I would, that I would say of my con, so. I love that. And I think you were getting ready to say something, John. Do you have one to share with us or? Pro, which is, I really don't have any cons, honestly. This, this was like a really great experience. Um, work with Nikki because we have several projects that we're trying to um, green light and get done and right currently so and Tiffany as well so pro it was a beautiful to be able to connect the artists artists musicians to and then have their music played in the project and see how it just carries the scene and how it just works with everything just beautifully um, with whatever with what Nikki put together so it was super dope to see that come to life um and just be there throughout the whole pro be there for that process so no no cons for me everything was good okay and john this is a question for you so you know you're not in front of the camera in this one you're behind the scenes you're helping with the music now you have different directorial um um things up your sleeve that you have done in the past. 
and you know we've seen you on Insecure. So how was that being behind the scenes now, kind of tapping into that hat and not being from the camera? Like, are there any differences, similarities? Well, the difference is, is like you don't have that much stress about being on camera. They're like, there's a lot of stress when it comes to being on camera, and then with the end product and what happens with the end product because as an actor you don't get to say like that um you get to say what happens on the day and what you're doing on the day but after that you trust you trust in everybody else's hands that what's supposed to come out on the other side sometimes you don't get a cut that you want sometimes the take they, they use a take you didn't like um whereas on the other side you have more control. You get to see more of the process. Um, and also, like, I have a, my degrees in business management. So I always love, like, being, being able to, like, pull strings and make things happen and connect people and, like, and, like see and, like, watch something happen from beginning to end, you know? So I love that whole process. So being behind the camera is not that bad as well. I actually love it. I love it just as much as I love being in front of the camera. Yeah, I want to see more of you behind the camera, too. I think you have a lot of great ideas. And just seeing your work, you know, it makes me really excited to see what else can this man produce. So Say less. There's We're more. waiting. We're waiting for say you. Less, say less. Say less. <laughs> um, if, you, if you haven't seen it, um, there's a thing called Send Help. I have the teaser trailer that's out online right now. Um, I, I wrote and produced that one as well and also starred in it. So okay. you can check that out. Check that out. Awesome. Yeah. Now this question is for the ladies. So being behind the scenes, especially being a black woman, the honor of the representation is very slim to none, unfortunately. Now with you both being behind this powerful film and also being within the Hollywood space, where do you see, especially with everything that's happening, what are your thoughts and where do you see the representation of black females within the Hollywood space and behind the scenes, as well as in front of the camera taking these lead roles? Because the last time we really saw a powerful black woman take a lead role was Viola Davis and, and um, Kerry Washington, and that was on mainstream television. So how do you feel like that representation is now in the Hollywood space and what do you feel you both are doing to push that envelope for other Black females to be behind oh. the camera as well? Well, as a producer, I mean, first of all, there aren't many Black film producers, female film producers. And I mean, I'm in this space and just in terms of casting, you know, we have producers have power to cast and we don't really see, you know, we talk about issues like colorism, we talk about sexism, gender discrimination. I mean, I would love to just be able to cast black women with natural hair, darker skin, Afro, mm -hmm. you know, just us, because we, I just don't see young black women who look like me or look like the women in my community represented as much as we should. So right. that's one thing I'm definitely excited about being able to do is just, just like projects like this, working with a talent like Ed and Duncan Smith I saw her in See You yesterday, which was like a black sci-fi. So, you know, I want to tell stories where, where that aren't typical, like, sci like a black sci-fi, you know, show us in spaces and worlds that we're never seen, but I want to see the diversity of us. So just being a black woman producer and having a career, not just being like one project when they need a diverse, when they need diversity and they need right. like that one project, you <laughs> want a career. There. Right. <laughs> and we don't want it to be a thing for the moment. We want it to be forever to stay. Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Not a trend. The lifestyle. Everybody needs it. Everybody deserves a seat at the table and everybody should be working too. You know? Exactly. We need more we need more stories like Lovecraft out there. Yes. Like, to walk with black people. Yes. Live. Like just get yes. to work. Like yes. so good. <laughs> I actually just started watching it and I was like hooked and I'm like, where's next week? Like, like what's, what's, happening? what's happening? Oh shoot. Oh, this is happening. Oh shoot. <laughs> Symbolisms for me, you know? Uh when they Story. even had Emmett Till scene, I didn't even realize it until like, you know, black turtle always hold it down. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> Do you have any may want to add to that? You know, being within the Hollywood space and being a black female and hopefully some it's, different it's obviously hard in these streets, but you know, the more opportunities the more exposure and exposure is important. Like the image is important to see a black woman and of, of any ilk behind the camera calling the shots. Like that's when it becomes normative. Um, and that there's more than enough space, you know, for a plethora of black women, not just one type of black woman, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's so important. Exactly, exactly. And I kind of love what you also said, Tiffany, as well, where it comes to the story. So you share what kind of shows you would like to see when it comes to Black people within the film space and TV space. But for John and Nikki, what are some stories you feel like we're not telling? Because a lot of times it's comfortable for us to be in comedic roles and to be in romance, romantic rom-com roles and things of that nature. But what are some other stories that you both would like to tell or like to see placed on screen? Love, actions man. westerns like that's my first go-to it's like okay. all the all the intersectionality in the western space like you know the first cowboys were black people no one knows about that you know like the fact that uh native americans and black people like own the west because they were help uh the native americans were helping african americans you know get freed it's all these things action movies the fact that there's not enough action like african-american action movie directors like why like we're we're like the people who are running the most in in life so like we need yes. to see more of that you know so yeah all right uh <laughs> yeah we need a lot more like let's talk about the people that came here the africans that came here before christopher columbus why not talk yes. about that? let's let's yeah. let's create you did you know that vikings were also african-american as african as well you know what i'm saying like they were out there traveling around the world. Let's talk about Queen of Monarinas, who we don't really talk about. And she was more of a boss than um, Cleopatra. Like, let's mm -hmm. talk about, let's talk about, um, let's talk about like stories where kids, like mental health about the, in the black, black and brown community where we just don't really touch upon that. Let's create, let's make black people superheroes. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's do that. Let's um, not the supporting role either, like the main yes. <laughs> exactly the main character. Yeah. There's there's so many stories we can tell. Um, espionage, spy stories. Um, right. and, and and what's crazy is like is we get it because the most of the world sees themselves sees white people, but mm -hmm. a black person in deep undercover, like that'd be amazing, you know what I'm saying? To see something yeah. like that. Um uh, See, this is why I, this is why I love Lovecraft because you're giving me Indiana Jones, you're giving me sci-fi, you're gi giving me, you're giving me all these things in one show, and then with all with so much context that you can't just watch it once. You got to watch it two or three times yeah. that same episode, so you get to like really digest what's happening. And like you were saying, like Black Twitter literally put you on that the fact that um, Emmett Till was in the story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about what was going on in the black community during the time uh, gangsters were around. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk about yeah. we have black people, African Americans, Caribbeans have their own Scarface. Let's talk about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk about everything that we can talk about when it comes to black people because we are the trendsetters, we are the storytellers, we are everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But we're not telling our stories we're also replacing us yeah there's a, there's a dope there's a dope story about an african who an african who went to this tribe in africa that nobody really knew that was a very civilized tribe in africa and he was black dude from like dc or something like that he was from okay. dc and he was there and they wanted to kill him off because nobody was nobody's supposed to know about their existence. But then they feel like, you know what, let's 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 accept this black man into our community. They taught him their language, they taught him everything. But then when the story comes out, we hear it's about a white man. You know what I'm saying? Like that does is that white man didn't break, don't find them. A black man did. So mm -hmm. those stories need to be told. Those stories gotta be told. And those stories will be told. 
Mm -hmm. I feel like I was in an African studies class for like the past three <laughs> minutes just learning all of this. <laughs> Yeah. Like we it's don't so know. It's so it's 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 life, <laughs> you know, like there's so much stuff that was happening in Africa during the time Genghis Khan was 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 running around. There yeah. was so much stuff happening during the time Julius Caesar was running around. There's so much time. There was so much stuff happening in Africa during the time um, Napoleon was running around mm -hmm. conquering. Like there's so many black stories that we're not telling. Yeah. And yeah, we know about um, the Nubian, we know about Shaka Zulu, we know about all those people, but there's more, there's a lot more people that we need to talk about and stories we need to bring to life. We need to make our own African -Amer African Game of Thrones, like, yeah. let's be serious. I'm ready for that. When you make that, you let me know. I will oh, it's, audition. It's coming, okay? it's coming, trust me, it's coming. <laughs> If you have anything of that nature, Ty Cole is coming to set. <laughs> it's now, now, with film evolving before our eyes, you know, what is your personal ultimate goal you hope to achieve during your career, especially within the film space? I know you kind of touched on a little bit with like the stories, like what is something that, you know, is ultimately something you would love to see during oh, I mean, that's an easy one. So in my career, at one point, I worked for Kath Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, she's one of my favorite producers. I want to be like her. Like, that's my goal, to just be able to work on blockbusters, just quality top of the line films, to have a deal with the studio, and to be able to just get whatever, you know, have the pull to get whatever I want made. So just to be like the black Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> I'm here for that. That can happen. Yes. We're gonna manifest that. It's gonna happen. Come back to me. I need to think. I need to think because um, it's one of those things I I ask myself a lot, you know. So come back to me. Okay. Uh, for me, it's my production company, Flourish, um, Bassett House Pictures, where I'm going to be incubating short films, pilot presentations and then helping usher in new generation of filmmakers um, and then helping them finance their short films and pilot presentations. So therefore they can enter the studio system and create their own bag, you know, um, and own their own content. Uh, I also want development deals so I can create the stories that I'm talking about right now um, and have a team that could assist me in that process of creating those amazing stories, creating our black Game of Thrones. I know, so I want to be able to do all that. Um, yeah. All right. Little Bassett House pictures and develop dope content. All right. Making a way for Black people. I'm here for that. Amen. <laughs> we need that. We totally need that. That's my motto for like every day. <laughs> Making a way for Black people. That's the, that's the mantra. Right. That's the Black motto. Now, you know, moving forward. So what was it for Nikki? I'll go to you first and, and John and Tiffany, you can answer this after, but for Nikki, what was your overall message you wanted the viewer to take from this film? And then John and Tiffany, you guys can think about your answer for this question. What was it that you specifically took from this film? I, the overall message, well, there's, it's double layered. Um, the top line message is to to liken the connection between having a mental illness or OCD to issues of racism and sexism, sexism, and how you know top line they're one and the same and that they're connected. You know, if being racist that's a mental illness, being sexist that's a mental illness. It's like an OCD; you can't stop it. But once you confront your fear, you know you're opening yourself up to being more human. And so that's the top line message. Um, the underlying message with that is, I want to see every young black female find their voice, so. Powerful. For me, it was, you know, everything she said, but also, you know, uh, persistence, just keep going and following your dreams. That's always, that, that message never gets old. I mean, we all have dreams and, we all have obstacles, but I love the fact that in this story, you saw this one night, you know, this one night that could change your life forever. And no matter what, she, she showed up to make it happen. 
So I think I want people to take, when people watch it, I want young people in particular to be inspired to follow their dreams and to never give up. Love that. And John? The, to piggyback on what Tiffany said, yes, your whole life can change in one night. Mm -hmm. Life can change in one call. Um, and that's one of the things I took away from this. And it's also a part of my personal journey, my personal story, um, where a phone call has changed everything. Um, a phone call, phone call has changed me physically, you know, um, to the point where I am now who I am. Um, and it's developed who I, who I'm going to be in the future and the things and the stories and topics that I speak about, um, for years to come. Um, so how you can just change was just a night in one night. I love that. I want to say, um, I actually manifested this interview. So I've been trying to, yeah. So I'll share a fun fact before we wrap this up here. So for this whole summer in quarantine, I was interviewing all these different celebs, but I said to myself, I really want to interview John. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but that doesn't make a way. I want to manifest this. So I was manifesting it, manifesting it. And it just was not happening. And I was like, all right, whatever. Like at some point in my career, I will speak to this man and we will have an amazing conversation about film and television. And boom, last week, I just get accepted to this. And then here we are. And I was like, wow. Look, look at, God. at the wow. power of the God. Look at that. <laughs> right. So this was awesome for me. This changed me in literally the past 20 minutes. So. And this will forever be a conversation I would take with the moving forward, especially for myself being a young creator and being a reporter, producer in my own right and actor in my own right, to speak to three amazing individuals who put together a film within five days under pressure and is opening up doors. To see someone like John in music videos and television and out behind the scenes kind of just lets me know that, okay, like I'm on my way and I'm like, I'm there. Like, Keep going because I see okay. what we're doing here and that's going to be me soon to come. So this is an amazing Definitely. For sure. Yeah.